What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we are finally going to be installing the ARB compressor in the Land Cruiser. Now as you saw last time with Alex uh, where she did the unboxing, uh, we have the compressor itself and the uh, air accessories kit, but we had no way to mount it into the Land Cruiser until now. This guy came in and Ta-da! It is our mounting kit. This one is from Slee Off-Road. It actually has two purposes. It mounts the air compressor for you, and it holds a second battery if you decide to go that route. Right now, I'm just gonna be doing the uh, air compressor. Maybe I'll do the uh, second battery later. All the tools and parts that I use in this video will be listed down below, so don't forget to check it out. Before I get started, if you're enjoying this video or you wanna see more videos like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, let's get started. Okay, so this is inside the engine bay right between the airbox, which is right here, and the firewall. And this is the power steering fluid. Now this one, um, on my Land Cruiser, I do not have the automatic height control, so there, it's, it's a pretty empty space. Um, according to the instructions, unclip the harness, okay. Okay, now I gotta uh, carefully unclip the power steering uh, reservoir. Let's see if we can do this with a little screwdriver. Okay, there's just a little clip right here. Next thing I need to do is unplug the mass airflow sensors. There we go, and then we're gonna take out the airbox. So right here, I'm gonna take off the intake. So now you want to take off the top part of the box. These little clips they should just come off. Four of them. Good time to replace your air filter too if you need to. And this guy slides out the top of the air box. This guy slowly slides out the bottom of the air box. So without the uh, air box, there's a lot of space here as you can see. Uh, the battery tray should go right here with the compressor and according to the instructions it says to flatten out this little ABS clip right here so instead of standing straight up like it is right now it needs instead of standing straight up like this it needs to go flat like this the next thing we need to do is unclip this uh, harness from the top right here there we go let's move to the side and this is the actual ABS uh, connector so this guy see how it's standing up right here it needs to fold flat like parallel to the ground you'll also see there's some type of clip pulling this bundle of wires uh, right here underneath so you'll need to go underneath into the wheel well and push it out I believe it's like one of these guys right here there so you wiggle it out And then it just releases it's like that so that's the uh, little clip you want to take out next step it says to install this guy but i don't think that's gonna work because the bracket is still right there for the original bracket for the power steering uh, doesn't say anything about it needing to come out in the instructions but um yeah, see it's hitting right there let me figure this out. So the factory power steering bracket, the little thing that was right here, definitely needs to come out. And I've also unclipped this guy almost fully from the chassis. And you see this tab right here, this is the one that needs to be bent flat. And I think you can kind of do it by hand too. Let's see. Yeah, it's like pretty soft. See, there we go, nice and flat. Now I won't get into the uh, way of the battery tray. Back where the battery tray is, this is the power steering reservoir. This is the ABS uh, clip that we just flattened. Now we've got this mess of harness. Um, these don't plug into anywhere, not for my car at least. Uh, maybe with the cars with the AHC has a, uh, a use for these guys, but um, 
they get into the way when you put the battery tray in so i am going to have to tuck them somewhere now you can see this is the tray right here power steering reservoir and this harness is still kind of uh, squished and i don't feel comfortable with that um, what i'll probably do is uh, unhook the abs wire out of the loom and just have those two running down there and this guy i'll have it to the side right here somewhere okay so i was able to unravel the loom and uh, get just these two wires out so now these guys are free and i can just tuck them in right here or wherever i feel like whatever's not in the way um what i'll do is i'll put a little bit of tape back onto here so it can slide around because that's what it was like from the factory with the harness out of the way there are tons of space to maneuver this guy power steering reservoir is going to go here somewhere i think it's over here there's a bracket um but yeah this uh, looks like it's gonna work. For the next step, I'll need to mount this tab and this tab right here. And the holes are on the body right there. And there's one right here, it's kind of dirty, but let's see, it's right there. Now you can see the bolt. There's one right there. And the other one is right there. I haven't tied them down yet. They have a little uh, lock washers right here and right here but you see they're still kind of loose because i still need a little bit of room to wiggle them around okay i don't know if you can see that but um there's a little hole right there it goes into a factory um hole uh and um basically right now everything's still kind of loose whatever and slee says i need to use this spacer underneath the tray and then bolt it down so uh, it's probably going to space it up slightly so it doesn't rattle around spacer is in it's kind of uh weird because uh nothing's holding it in right now but it's gonna be careful you don't drop it and lose it and then bolt goes in and i'm supposed to start the thread but do not tighten it so that's it right there okay so here's the front of the tray power steering reservoir is right here next we need to install this leg bracket um so this guy goes into a hole right here and we screw that in loosely and then we've got bolt and nut that they provided and it goes into this guy right here so that's your leg right there for this last leg the instructions say you need to drill a 5 16 hole small pilot hole first next the 5 16 hole and we put the leg back in and hopefully the holes line up it kind of lines up it's not too bad now last piece of the puzzle for the bracket is the mount for the power steering reservoir so slee comes with this guy right here and some bolts so we just need to bolt this guy in it's not fully tight yet but i'll get around to it once i get the uh, reservoir in there um, because what happens is you need to loosen these uh, clamps so you can rotate the hoses a little bit to get it set prop sitting properly in there. So what I'm going to do is just actually slide the clamps onto the hose so that way there's no pressure on it so I can rotate them if I need to. Okay, so those are slid off pretty nicely. According to the instructions before I uh, put it into the new bracket, these little corners have to be snipped, uh, trimmed a little bit. These ones right here, if you see it, that's where my broken glove is. Right there and on the other side. Okay, so as you can see, everything is mounted correctly. I've got the power steering reservoir that um, I already put the, uh, the hose clamps back on. Um, they have a little bit of tension in them, so um, you can rotate the hoses around or whatnot, but they still have a little bit of tension. So what I did is, just in case the thing, the, the reservoir decided to fly out um, of the clip, I have 
a zip tie right there. So, um, you know, if it gets loose or on a trail or whatever, it won't fly out and spray uh, power steering fluid everywhere. Okay, so now we're gonna try to mount the ARB compressor into the uh, bracket. Now, the thing that uh, you need to take note of is you wanna use these screws from the ARB kit, basically because they have these uh, the little squares at the ends. They go through this, th through the compressor itself, and then it stays still. So when you're tightening it, you only need to hold, you don't even need to hold this side. You can just tighten the nut from this side. So um, that's why the SLEE instructions tell you to use the ARB bolts on this guy. Okay, I have everything mounted here. You see the compressor, nicely solid mounted. And um, the SLEE bracket actually has four holes specifically for the ARB compressor, which is really nice. This is all bolted down now. And then the only thing that was um, a little bit interesting, so this, I still need to find somewhere to put it, since I'm not using the second battery right now, and it should go anywhere, it's fine. But uh, the only thing, like I said, was interesting was uh, this, I think it's the, a horn for the alarm. It used to go in this hole right here. It used to go in, uh, screw in right here on this little 10 millimeter, and it has a, had a little tab that went into the little hole. That actually hits the side of the uh, compressor. So what I had to do was shave off the little tab and um, just place it to the uh, the hole to the side, which is which was unused. So this works out really good, and there's a, the the plug is right there, and it reaches fine. It doesn't uh, hit anything. Everything's nicely solid mounted. Now, as far as the fittings go, there are three pieces that need to be hooked up. The first piece would be this guy, which is the little T. So where this this guy goes is right here, right there, and basically you screw it in and. One side will be for the air hose, the quick release, this guy, so we can hook up the hose. And the little thing on the side is actually for this guy, which is the pressure sensor. Uh, so whenever it hits a specific pressure, it'll shut off. What I'm going to do right now is um, put a little bit of Teflon tape at the end and screw these guys in. Okay, so we have a little bit of Teflon tape applied. Now we're going to screw this guy in. gotta make sure that the valve the little valve uh, the T is facing the right direction for the switch now we've got the pressure switch Then the last piece of the puzzle is the quick release for the hose, for the air hose. Now we're okay. So this part is going to be for the quick release for the air hose to air up the tires, pressure switch, and the compressor down there. Next is to tackle the wiring. So this little one, it's for the switch for the interior to turn the uh, air compressor on and off. This is the main harness, looks like. Plug into the relay, which is also supplied. The fuse. Big fuse, what is in here? Gigantic fuse. What is this like? Uh, oh, it's a 40 amp fuse. Okay, cool. Then at the other end, we've got some of these guys, I think the connector and I'm pretty sure this is for the positive and negative and the switch okay so this is the harness for the switch now this harness is able to do three switches basically you've got your compressor front locker and rear locker since I'm only doing the compressor I'm only really worried about these wires right here these guys I'm not gonna use right now it's the isolator switch is the one that I'm gonna be using uh, there are two wires, however, let me see if I can find them. They're right here. There's a blue and white and a red and yellow. Now these go to, uh, one of them is for lights and the other one is for ignition on. So you need to find somewhere uh, where they have uh, both of these. Ignition on shouldn't be a problem, but lights is kind of interesting. So what I did find was if you take off this panel right here, 
um, the bottom kick panel, I guess. It just pulls out after you take off this guy. I know it's a mess right now. But um, there is this little switch on the 100 series, which isn't plugged into anything, at least not mine. If you check, let's see here. I'll plug in my uh, circuit tester right here. Uh, so we do one hand. I believe it's the second wire. You turn on the lights and you have power. Turn it off. There it goes. So that could that is where I'm going to tee off, uh, get power for my light. And then as far as ignition goes, any one of these wires, uh, a bunch of these uh, will work for ignition. I'm pretty sure like um, something here will. I'll test that in a little bit. So as I suspected for the second click ignition on, I used one of the uh, rear window switches, the little you know, little vent switches. And um, this is the plug right here. You can see right there. That's the little plug. And I believe this uh, red wire, let's try it out real quick, is the one with power. So what you want to do is put your key in second click and then there we go see the light and then if I turn the car off on off so that's gonna be that's gonna be your uh, power switch right there too the one that uh, that is gonna power the uh, the little ARV switch uh, whenever the car is turned on so it's this guy right here the second one Okay guys, check it out. This is the final product installed. Uh, the compressor, the sleeve mount, the area for the extra battery right here if I decide to go that route. I've got the valve right here for the air hose. That's a quick release, really cool. I've got the relay for the air compressor right here. And I ran the wire all the way along the top. I haven't zip tied everything yet, but um, it's all the way along the top. Now this wire is for the switch itself, the switch inside the car. So it goes all the way over there and into the boot. I've got the pressure switch right here. You see the two little, the blue and the red? That's for the, pres uh, the pressure switch. So whenever it gets to a certain PSI, it shuts off. Over here, you see the rest of the wire. It goes all the way down and it goes through that boot. I had it already cut for my CB radio, so I just shoved it in through there and it works fine. Back here, you can see I have the positive and the negative hooked up. They supplied the uh, little terminals, a uh, little crimps, so just crimp it in and you're good. Inside the car, I haven't. Uh, What's it called? I haven't put everything back together yet, but um, as you can see, this is where I decided to uh, put the switch. So this is gonna go in here. I did have to grind off a little bit of the edge inside right here to make it fit. Uh, for some reason, Toyota decided to make a funny looking, I think it's for something specific, um, but the size is almost the same. You just grind down the edges with the Dremel and you're good. So this is the finished product with everything tucked away, um, no wires dangling. As you can see, I put it right here where there was a blank switch. And obviously right now with the car off, nothing will happen. When I turn the light on, you can see the little blue light that comes on. That's really cool. And if I have the key, let's see. key in, second click. Bluetooth mode. And I hit the compressor button the whole light comes on and you can hear the compressor come on now the compressor stopped because it already hit the target pressure it doesn't have a tank or anything so it hits it really quick so now if I hook up my tire pressure guy there we go so now with this guy hooked up and there you go so installing that guy really wasn't that hard, especially with the correct mount kit provided by Slee, but it does take a little bit of time to install it correctly. Whenever I'm on the trail next, let's see how long it takes to air up my 35s. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you wanna see other cool Land Cruiser videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I put out new videos every week.